Hi folks, Eagles Beat Reporter Mike K here for NJ Advance Media, and this is K's Take, where I take a much discussed Eagles topic and offer my analysis and a take on the matter. This week we'll be talking about Jason Peters and a potential reunion with the Eagles. There have been a lot of rumors out there. I want to talk about why it would be smart to bring him in and why it probably wouldn't be a great idea to bring him in. There's two outlooks here because you have to look at the present and the future. And when we talk about the future, you have to talk about... Andre Dillard. Now, Dillard was selected with the 22nd overall pick in last year's draft. The Eagles traded up to get him. They were surprised that he fell that far. They looked at a guy from Washington State who was a longtime starter, a left tackle, who is extremely athletic. He's got all the raw tools you'd want from a physical standpoint. Had an okay training camp, um, a bit of an up and down preseason, and then they moved him to right tackle in the middle of the season, a position he had never played before, but Lane Johnson went down. He was their best backup offensive lineman. And they put him out there, and he predictably failed. Failed miserably, to be honest with you. It was one of the worst uh, right tackle showings you've seen since uh, Michael Strahan went up against Winston Justice. It was really bad. But, again, it was predictable. He'd never played the position before. He even said before the game started that it was like using your opposite hand to right, moving from left tackle to right tackle. I'm sure the Eagles really appreciated that uh, notion. But he struggled there. Then Jason Peters got injured and had to undergo minor uh, scope surgery. So Andre Dillard came in, started three games, was up and down. Now, a lot of people thought he played very, very well. I don't think that was the case. He did give up a handful of sacks. There were some several miscues. I wouldn't say that he showed off all of his positive attributes during that three-game stretch. Then when Peters returned to the lineup, Dillard remained as the backup left tackle. Wasn't seen at right tackle again. It was sometimes used as the sixth offensive lineman in jumbo packages. But overall, you know, his his rookie season was up and down and mostly down. You know, he didn't play as much as you would expect a first-round pick to play, even with a future Hall of Famer in front of him. Peters played at a pretty decent level when he wasn't injured. Yes, you can talk about the false start penalties, what have you, but he was an upper-tier offensive tackle last year. Maybe not the Pro Bowl level, but he was definitely in the top 16 left tackles of the league. Um, you know, when the Eagles got to free agency, I, they felt like they potentially saw enough in Dillard to let Peters test the market. Both sides agreed on it. So Peters tested free agency. That was two months ago. He's still on the market. Um, last year, he made $6 million with the Eagles. I would imagine that he wanted more uh, to move to another team, to another city. Um, that hasn't happened yet. Now, since that decision was made, we've got more information on the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, the league has offered limited access to players during this time. You're, you got to remember, right now they would be in the offseason program. Coach Stoutland would be working with Andre Dillard hands-on, be, be able to coach him up, help his development from year one to year two. But right now, they're doing a virtual off-season where I don't think you can get as much development from that standpoint. You're not on the field. You're not working out. You're not going over game plans where it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. That's a problem. That's going to delay some development there. The Eagles likely projected that Dillard could start next year or this year with some intense development during the offseason program. But now with the restrictions set in place with the coronavirus pandemic and no end in sight, it might be smart to go with what you know. And I think that's the change of heart here for the Eagles. Dillard didn't have a great rookie season. I don't think he was particularly set up to succeed uh, in a lot of ways, much like J.J. Arcega-Whiteside, like we talked about last week. But that said... How much progress can you make if you don't have a full training camp, if you don't have a regular training camp that you can prepare for? Teams don't know what's going to happen during training camp at this point, you know, in the in the early, you know, summer months. So they can't just prepare and say, oh, well, well if we do this in, in July and then we do this in August, then he'll be, he'll be ready. They don't know if there will be a July to work hands-on with, with Dillard. They don't know if there's going to be a, an August either. So that said, um, you know, bringing in somebody who you know wouldn't probably be taking part in the voluntary program anyway, Peters, who hasn't really done that in previous years, uh, and having a guy that you know will be ready, knows what's expected of him, even on a short season um, or a short off season, that's important. And I think that's why 
Peters is being considered here. I think that's why there's mutual interest in a potential return. Now, here's the outlook, though. If Peters comes back, you're looking at another year on the bench for Dillard. Maybe they work on the right tackle position for him when they get time to have some hands-on training, and maybe he becomes a very glorified swing tackle, takes the place of Big V. But that said, you're still probably not going to play him very often. Yes, Jason Peters has has had several injuries over the years where he's had to leave games or he's missed games. But that's no guarantee that Dillard's going to get a lot of premium playing time. Um, they need to figure out what the cost-benefit analysis is of starting Peters this year and still keeping the water wings on Dillard and how that could affect his development and his confidence moving forward. Now, Dillard is a guy who was a full-time starter at Washington State. He has experience as a starting left tackle at the college level, got some experience last year. Are you going to really further delay his development for a win-now scenario? You know, he's a guy who was a first-round pick. If you're not going to start him after two years, that's a very rare occurrence in the NFL, especially a guy that you traded up for. While it was a minor trade, it's you still trade up. You you identified him, you made the move, you, you used more than one pick to get him. And so I think that's something that the Eagles have to decide. This has been a youth movement offseason for the most part. Yes, they traded for 29-year-old Darius Slay, but outside of that, they've really focused on guys coming off their first or second contracts in their mid-20s and getting guys to come in who can be role players. You know, you look at Will Parks, you look at Nicole Roby Coleman, you look at Javon Hargrave. These are guys who are still in their, their prime or just entering their prime. Dillard's a guy who is still young. He's in his early 20s. He's still developing. He could be the left tackle of the future if you view him that way moving forward. And I think the thing you have to weigh is you view this team as a potential Super Bowl contender. And if you do, I think bringing in Peters, bringing in the guy you know makes a lot of sense. If you just think you're competing for a division, maybe it makes sense to just roll with Dillard and see what you can do. That said, here's the thing about bringing in Peters, and this is why this is smart. If Peters goes down, you have Dillard. Now, if Dillard struggles in the first half of the season and there's no end in sight to his struggles, you don't really have anybody backing him up that you think can really come in there and contribute. I mean, they have Matt Pryor, who's most likely going to be the backup right guard and backup right tackle this year. You you drafted uh, Prince Tego Winagu, who fell in the draft due to knee concerns, but he's probably going to be a bit of a long term project due to his inexperience overall at the at at the game in the game. Uh, Jack Driscoll's a guy who projects more as an interior lineman, despite being a starting right tackle for Auburn. And then you've got guys like Sua Opeta, who barely played last year. You've got guys like Nate Herbig, who's more likely to be a center. Um, so that may be the outlook for the Eagles, is bringing in Dillard at a cheaper price. He, I mean, bringing in Peters at a cheaper price, you can then have Dillard learn behind him for another year, gain that, gain that knowledge. And then on top of that, you can have... Peters be the buffer. I mean, Peters would be the starter. He'd be your starting left tackle. You're keeping your starting offensive line together for one more year. This is a group that is among the best in the league, if not the best. And then you have Dillard, who can be the premium swing tackle for one more year as he's learning. The Eagles have shown a lot of patience with their draft picks. J.J. Arcega Whiteside's one of them. Sidney Jones, Rasul Douglas. This isn't out of the norm for the Eagles. That said, they said they really wanted to have a, 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 a youth movement this year, and bring in Peters would be the complete opposite of doing that. Now, moving forward, the Eagles have to consider whether they're playoff contenders or they're Super Bowl contenders. Super Bowl contenders need all the help they can get. They need all the insurance they can get. If they're just playoff contenders, maybe it's time to rip off the Band-Aid and just let Dillard have his learning struggles and his growing pains and, and protect Carson Wentz at left tackle. That said, they could always take the Jalen Hurts, J.J. Arcega Whiteside, Davian Taylor, Rasul Douglas, Sidney Jones outlook and take their time with Dillard you know he is a high investment for this team and so if he's not ready you've just got to make sure he's ready in the future and can perform on those final three years of his rookie deal now for all of our Eagles coverage turn to the sports section of NJ.com I'm Mike K thanks for joining me this has been K's take we'll see you soon